Yo, what's going on everybody? Just rocking here. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to be releasing my Adobe Premiere Pro Montage Transitions Pack and showing you how to install and use it. I released an After Effects Transitions Pack over a year ago and that video did really well and a lot of the comments were asking me if it would work in Premiere Pro or if I had a Premiere Pro version. I kept promising to release one but I never got around to it. So that's what this video is. As always, the pack is completely free so I'd really appreciate it if you could help me out with a like and a subscription. I've noticed a lot of you guys watch my videos but you're not actually subscribed so if there is you and you're not subscribed scroll down hit the subscribe button hit the like button while you're down there as well as check out my patreon for exclusive discord roles early access to videos project files and other exclusive content and follow me on all my other social media links will all be down in the description so let's get into it to download the presets you're going to want to head down to the description there'll be a google drive link there which will open up to a page just like this you'll see rockland's montage transition pack it might have opened up like this don't worry that's normal that's how the presets come it's basically just a premiere pro data sheet telling premiere pro exactly what effects to use what keyframes to use and where they should go so what you're going to want to do is come up to the top right corner and you'll see the download button so just hit download you see it's going to scan for viruses and it's going to download and then you're just going to want to open up Premiere Pro. You can see I've already started a project and I've imported a couple clips. To import the presets so you can use them, all you're going to want to do is come over to the right hand side under the effects tab. I am in the effects layout. If you're in the editing workspace, make sure you come over to effects and you'll see the effects panel over here. You should have a presets folder just like this and you're going to want to right click on it and hit import presets. And then all you're going to want to do is navigate to where you've saved the preset. So for me, it's just here. I'm going to select it and hit open. And now make sure you have nothing in the search bar. Otherwise, it's going to filter for those specific keywords. You want to make sure it's empty. Otherwise, it won't show up. Under presets, you should then see Rockland's montage transitions back. In this folder, if you open it up, there should be five more folders. You've got blur transitions, roll transitions, rotate transitions, swish transitions, and zoom transitions. If you open each folder up, you'll see the different transitions in there, just like that. And now let's get on to actually using them. So I'm going to drag the two clips onto my timeline that I want to transition between. I'm just going to cut this clip down. I'm going to mute the sound, otherwise it sounds like this. So I'm going to make my first cut here, scroll through, and then I want the transition to be after this kill. So I get on the spike. I'm going to cut it there and get rid of that. And then we'll drag this clip across and zoom in a little bit. And you know what? I think transitioning right at the beginning there uh, is actually, you know, that's where I want my transition to be. So I'm just going to trim the end of this clip off slightly just so it's not too long. And there we go, we can see I've got my two clips and a harsh cut between them. So I'm gonna go through each of the transitions individually uh, because some of them are slightly different, but they all work in a pretty similar way. So to add my transition, I'm gonna come over to my project bin, right click, hit new item and adjustment layer. Make sure the width and height matches your composition. In my case, it's 2560 by 1440. Yours will most likely be 1920 by 1080. And I'm gonna change my time base to match my composition as well. So you can see over here, my sequence is 60 FPS. So I'm gonna change it to 60 FPS and press okay. Now I'm just gonna drag this adjustment layer onto my timeline. Typically adjustment layers are five seconds in length by default. So yours should automatically appear this size. Some of my transitions will depend on the length of your adjustment layer. So you would shorten it to make the transition faster and lengthen it to make the transition longer but they don't necessarily all work like that hence why I'm going to cover them individually. So to start off we'll go over our blur transitions those are arguably the most simple they will depend on the length of the adjustment layer so if I add this blur transition on just by grabbing it clicking and dragging and letting go on the clip you'll see it will automatically add the Gaussian blur effect and three keyframes if you can't see this make sure you're under effect controls and none of these other tabs and you have the adjustment layer selected. So if we drag the playhead through the clip slowly, it's going to get blurrier and blurrier, and then it's going to slowly fade out of its blurriness. So I actually don't want the transition to be that long. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo, and that will get rid of the preset that we applied. And I'm just going to drag the adjustment layer down to about there and drag my blur transition back on. Now for all my transitions, there will be a middle keyframe. You're going to just make sure you snap to that middle keyframe, and that's where you want the cut on your timeline to be. So I'm just going to press M for a marker and just drag that over the middle of the space split just like that so we know that the max blurriness is in the center right over where our clips are split so if we watch this back there should be a nice blur in and blur out of the transition this is one of the most simplest transitions in the pack some of the others are slightly more complicated for example if we delete this blur we have the blur fade transition which works in the exact same way except it fades out and back in and we have the blur glow transition which again works the same way but instead of fading out it gets brighter and flashes to the next clip just like that 
Now onto the roll transition. So for those, you'll see we have a roll base. So we're gonna need two adjustment layers for that. All I'm gonna do for that is select our adjustment layer, hold Alt and click and drag up. And you'll see that I'll make another adjustment layer, an exact copy. So make sure you don't have any effects on it when you copy it. And I'm gonna drag the roll base preset onto the bottom adjustment layer. Anytime you're using one of the roll transitions, either the horizontal or the vertical, you must have a roll base adjustment layer underneath it. Otherwise it will not work. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. And then I want to use a horizontal roll so I'm going to click and drag that onto my top adjustment layer. Now this transition is one of the ones that doesn't matter how long the adjustment layer is. You can see we've got our shortened adjustment layer from the blur transition and the effect is this speed. But if we drag a new adjustment layer on, which is still five seconds and drag the transition back on, you'll see it automatically shortens itself. So the transition will always be the same length. You'll also see this is what it looks like if you use the rotate transitions without the base layer. So if we head back over, you'll see we've got here is our center keyframe. So we'll make sure we're on there and that should be where our clip splits. So I'm just going to clear the markers from these clips. We're coming up to markers and hit clear all markers. And I'm going to add a new marker in between. So you can see we've got two keyframes here. I'm going to snap to the first one. Make sure I have the adjustment layer selected and just press M on my keyboard. And you'll see now we have the markers there. So that tells us where to line up our transition. So I'm just going to drag them across until they snap. You'll see they should snap. If they're not, then you haven't got the magnet selected. So make sure you have that selected and it should automatically snap the markers to the split in the clips. So if we watch, this is what this transition looks like. And there you go, that is the horizontal roll transition. And now we're on to the rotate transitions. They work pretty much the same way as the roll transitions in the way that they need a base. The rotate base and roll base is actually different, so you can't use them interchangeably, unfortunately. But you're gonna have to do the same thing in duplicating this adjustment layer. So I've just added a fresh one back on. I'm gonna hold Alt and drag up to duplicate it. And I'm gonna drag the rotate base onto the bottom clip. And I want to use rotate clockwise, so I'm gonna drag and drop that onto the top adjustment layer. And as you can see, again, this is one of the ones that is gonna keep the same scale and it doesn't matter how long the adjustment layer is. So you can see all this adjustment layer here is not doing any transition. It's only gonna be right at the beginning. You'll see here's the spin transition right at the beginning of the adjustment layer. And the reason for that is because of these graphs which I've set up to make the transition smoother. If it was to automatically scale those across the length of the adjustment layer, the graph wouldn't say smooth. If you want to make the transition longer, you can just drag the keyframes further apart and then manually fix the graph to match what it looks like here, just obviously over a longer period of time. But for the sake of simplicity, I've just left it so that it will automatically keep the same timings as I set it up with. So now you can see there's literally no point of having the rest of this adjustment layer. So I'm just going to trim it off here. I'll trim them both because we don't want to have the base where there is no transition above it. So I'm just going to split the layers and delete that. And much the same as the other ones, I'm going to navigate to my center keyframe. I'm going to make sure I have the adjustment layer selected and press M to add a marker. And then I'm going to line these mark this marker up with the split between our clips. So you'll see this is what the rotate transition looks like. Very clean. And of course, it's much the same uh, with the anti-clockwise one, except the spin goes in the other direction. Now onto the swish transition. So for these, you don't need a base layer. You literally just drag and drop it onto your adjustment layer. And these ones do scale with the length of the adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go with a right swish and drag it on. And you'll see if I play this, the swish is gonna last the entire duration of the adjustment layer. which looks really bad in my opinion. So we're gonna control Z to undo that. And we're gonna drag my adjustment layer down to something just like that and position it in the center over my clip. So something like that. And I'm gonna drag my right swish back on and we're gonna watch it and see if that's any better. I think that's still slightly too slow. So again, control Z to remove the transition. And I'm gonna cut the adjustment layer down a little bit more, something like that, and position it over the center again. Drag the right swish on and let's see what that looks like. Again, slightly too fast. What about this time? We'll try drag it on now. And there we go, I think that's much better. In my opinion, uh, it looks better the faster it is with the, with the swishes at least. So I'm gonna keep the transition just like that. Again, we have our center keyframes. You can see them at the bottom down here. So I'm just gonna make sure we're on that. And I'm gonna come down to my timeline, select the clip and press M so we have our marker and line that up just so we can make sure that the transition happens exactly over the split between the two clips. And that is the switch transitions, arguably one of the simplest ones here. 
And finally onto the zoom transitions. Now these ones again will not scale with the length of the adjustment layer. So if we drag it on, you'll see the keyframe stay over here. And it's for much the same reason that it's using the graphs again. So these graphs, like I said before, if you drag them out, they start to do weird and wonderful things like this. So I'm gonna leave them as they're intended. And we're just gonna trim down our adjustment layer to where the transition finishes. So after the last few keyframes, cut the adjustment layer and delete it. And now I'm gonna to head to the center keyframe, which you can see is these, all these three in a line. Come down to my adjustment layer, press M to add a marker, center it over my two clips, and it should work just like that. As you can see, the it zooms in, flashes, and it reveals the next clip. Again, super duper simple. And that's pretty much it for my gaming montage Premiere Pro transitions pack. If you guys like the pack, enjoyed the video, or found this tutorial useful, make sure you subscribe and like the video, as well as leave a comment with any other tutorial suggestions that you would like to see from me in the future. Check out my Patreon, as well as follow me on all my other social media, links will be down in the description. Also, make sure you check out my channel for loads of other gaming montage editing related tutorials. But other than that, thanks for watching the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,